Hello folks. In this video, I'm going to add in some music and sound effects, as well as a transition so that whenever I go between levels or start a new game, I get this sort of fade to black effect between them. So first of all, to load in music, I need to add in an additional module. So right at the top where I've got my import Pygame line, just below that I will say from Pygame import mixer. And this is what I'm going to need to be able to load music and sound effects. Now, just like Pygame, Mixer also needs to be initialized. So above here, I will say mixer.init with brackets. And now I can start loading in the music files. So I'll come down here uh, where I've got my images section. And just above, I'll comment off an area, which I'll say load music and sounds. And I'll start loading in the, the music in here. So the functions for that are pygame.mixer.music.load. And to load in the music, I need to give it the file's location. Just like I did with the images previously, I need to tell Pygame where to find the files. So in my case, if I come into my shooter folder, this is where my code is stored. And next to the code, I have these other folders. And one of them is called audio. And within there, I've got my different music and sound effects. So that means that to load them, I need to first of all, give it the name of that folder and then the name of the file. So in my case, it's music2.mp3. So that's going to load that in by looking for it in this folder and it's going to find it there. Now you may have your folders arranged differently or named differently, in which case you need to make sure that you update this correctly. So with that loaded, there is one more function I want to call on it. So I just type this out again, pygame.mixer.music. And this time I want to say set underscore volume because the original music file was a bit loud. So I'm going to set it to 30% of the original volume. And lastly, to actually get it to play, I say again, pygame.mixer.music, and it's dot .play. And there are a few arguments in here. So the first one is how many times you want this to loop over. I'm just going to put negative one, which basically means it's going to loop over indefinitely. Then you can put in a delay. Now, I don't want this delay, delay at all, so I'll say zero, zero. Uh, and then lastly, you can put in a, a duration of fade, so that the music doesn't instantly come in at full volume, but it sort of fades in. And this is in milliseconds. I'm going to put mine to 5,000, so five seconds. So if I run this code now, I should get background music. And there you go. It's coming through. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but it's coming through and playing there now. Uh, next, I want to load in some sound effects. And I have three. I've got one for jumping, one for shooting, and then lastly, for the grenade explosion. So to load them in, I assign them to variables. First of all, I'll say jump underscore fx equals pygame.mixer, and this time it's dot sound with a capital S. And then again, just as before, I need to give it the file's location. So in my case, it's audio forward slash jump dot wav. Uh, and then this one as well, it was a bit loud. So I'm going to set this one down, set underscore volume. And this one's going to be 50%, so 0 0.5. Now I can copy this down and just rename the files. So the second one and the third one. So this one is going to be called shot effects. These are my gunshots. And I just rename all the jumps here to shot. And then the last one is just going to be grenade. So I'll rename all of these to grenade. That's it. So that's all my sound effects loaded, but I need to actually trigger them. So anytime I jump, I need to make sure that I'm triggering this one and the same for shooting and explosions. Well, jumping occurs whenever I press the spacebar. So I can go all the way down to my main game loop and right at the bottom, I've got this event handling section. And here, uh, is it here? Yeah, oh, it's not spacebar, it's, uh, it's W. So when I press W, that's when I jump. So just underneath, I can call that variable and I can make it play. So I'll say jump underscore FX dot play. So if I run this code now, Every time I jump, there's a little jumping sound effect. Okay, so that's one of them. Next one I want to do is when I shoot. So remember, I have a method for that, which is just called shoot. And that is within the main soldier class. So there it is there. It's part of my overall soldier class that's got the update, move, and so on. And right at the bottom of the shoot method, I'll just add shot underscore fx dot play. So the good thing here is that because this method applies to the entire class, it doesn't matter who's shooting. So the sound effect is going to be played whether I shoot or whether one of the enemies shoots. And lastly, it's the explosion sound effect. 
and that one happened when the grenade blew up. So I should be able to scroll down into my grenade class, uh, right down here, and I don't want this to happen as soon as the grenade is thrown. But remember, I have a countdown timer within the grenade here. So within the class, I've got this timer, and then when it gets down to zero, the grenade explodes and it creates this explosion instance. At the same time as it does that, I want it to play the sound effect. So I can say grenade underscore FX dot play. So that should be all of my sound effects loaded in and added to be able to play. So I'm just going to test this out. And there you go. So you notice the sound effects all play when the action is performed, but also whenever the soldiers shot back, they also made a sound effect because that update method, or sorry, that shoot method applies to all of the instances. So what I would like to do next is add in some kind of screen transitions. I'm going to mute some of this music for now. So I'll get rid of the uh, background music and I'll just set the other sounds really, really quiet just so they don't distract. Now, if you notice, as soon as I press start, it just drops me straight into the game. And if I run across, uh, for example, the player dies, nothing really happens. It just comes up with this restart button. So it's a little bit anticlimactic, and I would like to add in a little transition effect. And I'm going to do this with a new class. So if I come right down to the bottom where I've got all of my other classes, uh, just underneath this explosion class, I will create a new one for my screen fades. So I'll say class screen fade. And then for the constructor, I'll say init, and it's going to take the arguments of direction because it's going to move potentially in different ways. Uh, and then a color. So I want the death color to be different to when I just start the game or change levels. And then lastly, a speed. So then I can just assign them to the instances. I can say self.direction equals direction. Just need to type all these out now. Color equals color, self dot speed, whoops, is speed, and lastly, self dot fade counter. So this this is one that's not being fed in, but this is one that I will need to use uh, because these fades are going to be based essentially on a counter, just like a lot of the other stuff that I've done so far, like some of the animations, they'll just be based on a counter. So now I can start defining the method for actually executing these fades. So I'll say define fade. It doesn't take any more arguments. And I'll start off with a simpler one. Uh, I'm just going to basically control this by creating a rectangle on the screen and then moving it across the way. So the one that I want to put on first is when the player dies, I want this sort of red, well, pinkish red rectangle to come down the screen. So for that, I just need to draw a rectangle. Let's say pygame.draw.rect. Then it takes the argument of the display window, which is my screen. Then a color, so I've already got that here within the class. So I'll say self.color, and then I need x and y coordinates as well as a width and a height. So I needed to start in 0, 0. So I wanted to start in the top left corner, and in terms of the width, I wanted to span the entire game window. So I'm going to say screen width. Uh, but because this is going to be moving down the way across the screen, I wanted to start off at 0, and I wanted to increment by some kind of counter. Well, I already have this, which is my self.fade underscore counter. So the idea now is that I'm going to increase this counter throughout each iteration, and that's what's going to make this rectangle grow down the way. So I'll put that right at the start of this fade method. I'll say self.fade underscore counter is increased by the speed. This means that I can change the different speeds of these fades as I set them up. So now that I've created the simple one, I need to remember create an instance of it. A class alone isn't enough to actually put anything onto the screen. So I'll say in here, create screen fades. And for now, the only one I want is when the player dies. So I'll say death underscore fade equals an instance of the screen fade class. And then I need to start putting in my arguments. So direction, well, I'm not actually using direction just yet. So for now, I'm just going to put in two uh, because that is the one that I've kind of reserved for this. Then the color I need to define, but I'm going to use the color of pink. And then the speed is going to be 4. Now, I don't think I've defined that color yet. So let's go all the way back up to the top. And here I've got all my colors. Uh, yes, I don't have it yet. So let's put this in here. Say pink equals 
235, 65, and 54. So I, I defined this already previously. Now this is done, all I need to be able to do is just call that instance's fade method. Because the instance exists, but until I start updating it and actually calling it to the screen, it's not really going to grow and therefore it's not going to show up. Now, this is for when the player dies, so it makes sense that I put it into this section here. So this is my if player is alive check. Well, if he's not alive, I have this else section here, which instantly goes into my restart button. Before I go into the restart button, I want to put on that fade. So I'll say death underscore fade, which is the instance, dot fade, which is the method. Now, I haven't coded it fully because I'm doing it in steps, so I'm not entirely sure what will happen here, but I'm just going to run along and I'm going to run into that pool of water there and see what happens. And there we go. So it is working. I'm getting this rectangle coming down across the screen. What is happening, though, is that it just continues to go. Although you can't see it, it's continuing to go down the screen and off. I don't really want that. I need that counter to stop at some point and basically tell me that it's finished. It's across the entire screen and it's done. So that means I need to go back into this new class up here and just add a few more conditions. So the main one is I want to know whether the fade is complete or not. So I'm going to start off by saying that it's not complete. So I'll say fade underscore complete equals false. This is going to be at the start of every iteration of the fade method. Then I'm going to increase the counter, essentially move the, the fade across the screen. And then lastly, I can start to do a check on whether or not that fade is enough and we can now move on. So I'll say if the fade counter, so self.fade underscore counter, is you could set a particular number, for example. Uh, I'm just going to pick screen width because in my case, the screen is wider than it is tall. So I know that if it's gone that far, then it's basically covered the screen in either direction. So if that has happened, then that fade complete, oops, not capital, fade complete can now be set to true. But of course, this is a variable that's just within the method. I need to make sure that I can get it out of here. So I add in a return and I return fade complete. And remember, that means that I can actually take variables back from this method now. So if I go back down to where I just called it, within this section here, where the player, so remember this is if player is alive, and this is the else, else statement that goes with it. So now I can put an if statement at the start here. I can say if death.fade underscore fade dot fade, which basically means that if the fade is complete, is returning a true value, only in that case do I want to do all of this stuff. So that means that the restart button isn't going to come up straight away. So it gives me a little bit of a delay. And if I run into this water again, as soon as I jump into it, it's going to run this kind of death animation. Basically, it's going to run across the screen and then it gives me the restart button. So that was the easier one. Now I want to set up another transition which is going to be the one that happens when I start a new game or I move on to the new level. So I come back up into my screen fade class and I can just update this fade method with this additional information. So the first bit kind of stays the same, but now I'm not going to need this rectangle here happening every time. This actually only happens when the player dies. So that I'm just classing as direction two. So I'll say here, if self dot direction equals Two. and I'll just have a little comment to say what that means. So this is my uh, vertical screen fade down. Then I just indent this section. So remember, I fit in two as my direction argument at the start. So that means that this is still going to work because my self direction for that instance is going to be set to two and that's going to give me this set of rectangles or this one rectangle. But now I can add in a different type of fade within the same method. So now we can say if self.direction is equal to one, which I'm going to say with a comment is a whole screen fade. Uh, now I can start adding in the other type of fade. So again, this is going to be using a bunch of rectangles, but what's going to happen here is they're going to start off completely blocking the screen and they're going to slowly move out the way and basically open the screen up. So I'll do them one at a time and that will be easier to see what's going on. So the first one, pygame.draw.rect so again I'm just using rectangles here onto the screen self.color oh, missed an n there and this rectangle is going to take up the left ha half of the screen so it's going to come all the way down but it's only going to take up 
half of it. So for the x and y coordinates, it's just going to be 0, 0. Then for the width, like I said, it's going to be half of it. So it's screen width divided by 2. And it's going to go all the way down, so it's screen height. But again, I need this rectangle to move. So for that, I need to control the x coordinate. That x coordinate is here, so I can just take away the fade counter. So self dot fade underscore counter. And this basically means that as this variable increases, which it does every time of uh, this, this method is run, then this rectangle just moves slowly over to the left. So there's a few other rectangles I need to add in, but I'm just going to do this one by one, or at least I'll do this one first. Now I just need to make sure I create an instance of it. So intro underscore fade equals an instance of the screen fade class. Direction here is one. Remember, that's referring to this bit up here. Uh, the color is going to be black. And then the speed, I'll keep the same as four. Now to actually run this, I need a couple extra variables. So I'll come up right to the top where I'm defining my game variables. And here I've got start game, but I also need a new one, which is start underscore intro. And I set this to false to begin with. And the reason for that is I don't want the intro to be run instantly. I only want it to be run once I've clicked start game from my menu. So I go into the game loop down here. And remember, I have this section here where the game has not started yet. I draw my menu onto the screen and then I look for button clicks. So if I've clicked on the start button, then the start game variable is set to true. So it kicks everything off. But at this point, I also want to run the intro. So I say start underscore intro is also set to true. Well, now that this is happening, we can go down into this else statement because the start game variable is now true. So all of this is going to be running. So I'll come down underneath all of my groups, just above where I'm updating the player actions. I will show that intro. So I'll say show intro and I'll do an if statement check. So if start intro oops, is true, well, then we need to run that fade. Uh, but remember, the fade actually returns. So I can now say if intro underscore fade dot fade so basically this is going to run the fade but it's also going to look for it to be complete and if it is complete i need to make sure it doesn't keep repeating so i need to set it back to false so i say start intro becomes false so let's just make sure that it's only run once but the other thing is remember this class had a, a variable called the fade counter i need to make sure that i restart that and i reset it back to zero because i'm not deleting the instance of this class when the fade is finished so really all of those variables stay as they were in the last state before it was, you know, before I stopped running it. So I need to make sure that I reset it back to zero. So here I will say intro underscore fade. And this way I can access the variables within that instance. And the variable that I want is the fade counter. So I'll set that fade counter back to zero. Basically, I'm saying that at this point I have completed that fade or that intro fade. So I can reset it back to zero, set it to false. And it means that I can rerun it from scratch next time I want to. Although that does mean that I think I forgot to do that for the uh, the death fade. So, yep. So here where I'm checking for that death fade being complete, I then have my restart button. But once I've clicked the restart button, I need to make sure that I reset that fade. So here I'll also say death fade dot fade counter is set back to zero. If I didn't have this line, what would happen is the first time I died, it would run that count uh, that fade. But then the second time I died, it wouldn't because it's already down the bottom. It's already finished. So it's not going to reset itself automatically. I need to make sure that I'm adding this in. But what I also want to do here, remember when the player restarts the game, I want to run that intro fade again. So underneath here, I just trigger it. So I'll say start underscore intro equals true, which of course means that if we come up here, that's going to trigger this section and it's going to run the fade over again. So I think I've cut it all in there. Let's just try this and see what happens. As soon as I click start, I should get a rectangle across the left-hand side that moves away. And there we go. So that's that's coming together. I just need to build the rest of the rectangles in. So let's go back up to that class and just add all that stuff into it. And basically all I'm doing is just adding more of these rectangles. So the second one that I'm going to do, I'll say pygame.draw.rect. Uh, exactly the same initial bit, so it's screen self.color, but then for the x, y, width, and height, I now want this one to start over in the middle of the screen and move to the right. So the x coordinate starts as screen width divided by 2, 
uh, plus the self dot fade counter. So that means that as the counter increases, this moves to the right. The y coordinate is zero. I wanted at the top of the screen. The width I'm just going to keep as screen width. Oops, screen width, and the height is going to be screen height. So let's just run this again to demonstrate. Now I should have two rectangles moving apart. So it's kind of like a pair of curtains moving across. But I want another two vertically, which just gives me this kind of uh, hold effect. So the whole screen goes away. So now I just need to add in two more rectangles. I'll say pygame.draw.rect. So exactly the same, but now I'm just flipping this round to do it for the vertical ones. So kind of the same as what I've done at the top. Uh, but now the x coordinate stays the same. The y coordinate is 0 minus self.fade counter. The width is the entire width of the screen. The height is only the screen height divided by 2. And the last one, pygame.draw.rect. So again, a bit repetitive here. Self.color. And this final one is, again, it's going to be moving vertically. So it's going across the screen. So the x coordinate is zero. The y coordinate is going to be starting at halfway up the screen. So screen height divided by two. And then it's going to be moving down the way. So we add on the self.fade counter. And for the width, well, it goes all the way across. And for the height, it doesn't really matter. So we'll just say it goes all the way up and down as well. So I'll run this again. And there you go. I think that looks much better. It fills out entirely. The only place that I need to still add this is when I move on to a new level. Uh, I haven't demonstrated this because the level arrow is right at the end of the level, but all I need to do again is just make sure that I'm calling this run or sorry, this start intro section. And I do that by setting the start intro variable. Uh, if I come up here, this variable here to true. So anytime I set that to true, it's going to run this little fade. And I know when to run that because I have a section for when I move on to the next level, which is right here. So if this level complete variable is true, well, straight away, let's just start running the intro. So we say start intro equals true. So I'll demonstrate it again. I'm not going to go to the end of the screen, but if I run along here, I'll, uh, I'll run into that water again. So you notice there's no restart button until this fade is complete. I restart and then it runs to the intro again. And that's it. That's the game pretty much complete now. So I hope you found this tutorial series useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, then just feel free to put them into the comment section below. And thanks for watching.